I'm Alexis. And I'm Tiffany, and we're the hosts of Legit Kid Lit, a video series where we get to see into the secret and silly lives of authors and illustrators. We love to celebrate and promote books, but most of all, we want to say hey to all you readers out there trying to find that right book for you. We hope that you can find some new reads after today. Legit Kid Lit welcomes three amazing young adult authors, Nora Shalloway Carpenter, Dante Miedema, and Alex Richards. We are so happy to have you here on Legit Kid Lit episode 45. Uh, okay, hi, I'm Alex Richards. I'm a young adult author. I have wrote um, Accidental, which came out last July, and When We Were Strangers, which comes out this July. They're both contemporary YA books um, about... Uh, sorry, I'm a little flustered. They're both contemporary YA, um, kind of dealing with heavy subjects, but sort of also including some hope and romance and humor and really strong friend groups. And um, I'm excited to be here. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Nora Shalloway Carpenter, and I'm also a YA author. And um, my debut book is called The Edge of Anything. And it... Um, is about vulnerability and the transformative power of friendship and mental health. And then I have another um, book, an anthology that I put, have a short story in too. Um, it's called Rural Voices. And let's see, um, it's basically exactly what the subtitle is, 15 Authors Challenge Assumptions About Small Town America. And then I have another anthology coming out um, with Candlewick called Absolutely Normal. Um, that won't be out to, for 2023 though so um and then i my next book my next novel is not announced yet hi i am dante Miedema, and my young adult novel the truth project came out in october it's about a girl who finds out via an online ancestry kit that she's the product of an affair it's told through texts emails and poetry of course and yeah i think that's it i have another project i should be able to announce soon so yeah just look for that Poetry, text, and emails. Oh my goodness, I need to read this book. Don't make me blush. It's too early for that. Don't do that. So writing can be a very isolating job. Um, so it's nice to have people around you um, to help make it more enjoyable. We would love to know how you all know each other. All right, I can answer that question unless somebody else is. Um, we know each other because we were in a Facebook group, the Roaring Twenties debut that we kind of started, I think, in 2019. And everybody was like a place for everybody to get together and ask questions about publishing and find out different things. And then sort of groups, people just kind of formed. I don't even really exactly remember, but um, uh, we've got this little group of people that we text with each other sometimes a thousand times a day, sometimes two thousand Dante lives in a different time zone, so she's usually way behind, and she wakes up to a thousand missed text messages. Sorry, Dante. Yeah, totally. I think we formed because um, we all write contemporary novels about, like, like tough issues. <laughs> like, they have more than that in the story, but, you know, like, mine's about mental health, um, Dante's has an affair, Alex's has gun violence so everybody in our little group is writing um things that when they books that when they came out like right in the pandemic it was like people they, they kind of got overwhelmed because people didn't really weren't interested in these like hard topics in the middle of a global pandemic so who else is in your group like family or friends or pets um that help to accomplish all of your writing goals um, let's see, to the people in my group, well, in our writing group, um, it's Dante and Nora, Rocky Callan, who wrote A Breath Too Late, um, Kiri McCauley, who wrote If These Wings Could Fly, and Liz Lawson, who wrote The Lucky Ones, and they are people that have been very supportive, <clears throat> um, during all this crazy, crazy times, um, and then my husband and my kids and my cats, although I will not say that my cats or my kids have been helpful at all in my writing process uh, yes basically the same um for me uh my husband is very supportive um but it was really really hard when everything shut down i have three small children um and so when schools shut down and i was still 
working on projects or trying to work like everything just like whoo slowed way down but um definitely my family and then i have um a cat pumpkin and holmes is our dog as in sherlock holmes writing is so funny because it's a solitary thing and we're like alone when we do it kind of but i am such a social person that it becomes like i have made it a social experience hence like the massive group texts um Obviously, like my husband, my kids are always around and like Nora, uh, the pandemic really shook things up. I've got four little ones, two of them weren't even in school yet. Uh, so last year was kind of like a blur. Um, yeah, so people in my group, I've got, you know, my trusted critique partners, I've got my dogs and uh, I'm on Clubhouse a lot. We do a lot of writing sprints and that helps keeps me, helps keeps me, helps keep me. I speak English accountable um, just so that I am accomplishing things otherwise like yeah you know, you've heard me talk I'm chaotic and I would never write anything I also just need to add that my mom helps a lot she um, once everyone was able once everybody was vaccinated and we could like be with my parents again my mom helps um, watch my kids a lot while I write also, I just want to go on record as saying Liz Lawson is my nemesis and is not helpful at all. A very long history of their nemesis relation relationship and everybody on Twitter, everybody follows it. It's it's a positive experience. Now I need to know the gossip behind this. What's the story? What did Liz do? Okay, so first of all, Liz is a pantser and I really find that offensive. Um, it's really hurtful when she's talking about how she just writes books without planning them and like never outlines and I just think that's a little sociopathic and you know she's kind of rude to me you know in all like in all reality Liz is a very good friend and I love her so much but yeah it's a funny nemesis uh, relationship that we have this is one of my least helpful critique partners right there hi Oh my gosh, no. No, Dante is definitely an outliner. She can pull up like a, like a, like a, what's like a pitch, like what's your book about in like three seconds. It's amazing. I also want to just say that I, like Dante, am a very social writer. So when things open up, like I have a group of friends in Asheville, writer friends that we like meet every week and we just sit at a coffee shop and write together, like just work on our own stuff and we talk you know, if we have to ask questions or whatever, but mostly it's just like doing our solo work together. And it's just so much more fun that way. So Alexis and I are huge coffee drinkers. Um, how many of you have coffee to thank for making your goals? I love coffee. I love coffee so much. I wish I didn't love it as much as I did, but basically I equate it with writing. So I just have to drink it like all day so i've just switched to decaf decaf and then i also have to drink an equivalent amount of water and then i have to pee um like eight times at the end of the day to quote the great laura lie yomar i believe in a past life i was coffee this is one thing i'm always really embarrassed about because i don't drink coffee i can't drink caffeine i am too anxious it makes me too stressed out so i drink water spicy water which is a term that my daughter coined when she was two because i drink um you know sparkling water and sometimes tea but mostly water alex that's too healthy you drink water come on now i can't help it she doesn't drink water nor she drinks spicy water I drink so much sparkling water that instead of just having the little soda stream bottle we bought a thing of co2 that is heavier than my children and it's in the corner of the living room from the kitchen i'm just saying that's how much spicy water i drink you you have a spicy water problem we are off to a great start but we know our viewers are ready to get to know these authors even more what five things are in your starter pack okay um mm -hmm. Spicy water, definitely. Um, I'm from New Mexico. Here's my New Mexico tattoo. I'm gonna say green chili is very, very important. Chapstick, gotta have my chapstick. I'm one of those weird people. I have to be like surrounded by pillows. I always need a pillow in my lap, pillows around to like rest on my computer and all my stuff. And number five, oh my God, I can't think of a fifth thing. Um, ah! 
Okay, so let's see, five things in my starter kit. Okay, so what I, I love to talk to myself. I'm always like tell, like kind of being like, okay, Nora, like let's do this, let's, let's get it, let's get this done. Um, I love nature, almost uh, pretty much everything I write is set in like a beautiful natural setting and um, often people talk about how nature is like a character in my books, it's super important to me. Um, uh, I love to laugh even um, so like there'll be like funny things in my books even if there's like sat to kind of like offset like the sad moments because I just you can probably tell from this thing <laughs> my daughter is here trying to talk to me just one second um, I also love my sticky notes that I post to myself saying things like write badly Nora just to like get me through the drafting process and also of course I love 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 my coffee I love the idea of you writing post-it notes to yourself that say write badly. That's so cute. Okay, so my five, my in my starter kit, five things. Forget-me-nots, because Alaska. Pop rocks, because you can't have a bad day with pop rocks. X-Files, because aliens. Books. And the Enneagram. So legit kid lit viewers totally want you to confess what was your most embarrassing middle school or high school moment. Okay, I do have an answer for this. When you when I saw the question, I like something immediately came to mind. When I was in middle school, um, like you everybody I went to a small school, so everybody goes to prom together and like I was going with a big group of people to prom, but we were going to meet up for dinner first, and I didn't realize that we were going to meet up for dinner, the boys and the girls, and then the girls were going to split up and go back home and get ready, and then, like, primp and get their dresses on and stuff, so I showed up, everybody's wearing, like, flip-flops and shorts and stuff, and I showed up in my fancy dress to this, like, Chinese restaurant in town, and I was mortified, and I definitely still think about it sometimes. Alex, I want to go on record and just say that you were correct in that situation. You are definitely supposed to wear your fancy evening wear out to the restaurant because that's like the whole point of it. That's what I've seen. Like that's what everybody I know does. So that wasn't on you. That was just everyone else. Yeah, that was on them for sure. Yeah, I bet they were all jealous. Like they wish that they would have worn their fancy dresses out. Like I wish I could have done that. I never did that. You were the one that was right in that situation for sure. Thank you, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I just thought of one. I actually have a really, this was really mortifying for me. So, um, I played sports. I was on the volleyball team and the basketball team. And um, I was, I showed up at basketball practice one day and one of my friends was like, hey Nora, I, uh, I told this guy that you liked him. And I, he was like one of the most popular kids in our school. And I was like, why? Why would you do that? And she was like, I don't know. I just think, you know, like, don't you think he's cute? And I was like, um, first of all, he has a girlfriend. And like, I just don't understand why you would do that. So I was really upset and mortified that she would do this. So the next day, I like tracked him down and told him I didn't like him like that while he was with his girlfriend. And he kind of like laughed and was like, okay. And like just kept on walking. And then... My friend told me that she just freaking made it up to like, I mean, first of all, not a very nice thing to do, but also mortification. Nora, I cannot believe that. That is, what did you do to your friend? Did you like get, get really mad at your friend? Did you stop being friends with your friend? I would have been mortified too. <laughs> so no, we are actually not friends anymore because she's not a, that was not a very nice thing to do, right? And that was, that was kind of a clue. Um, but you know, small town, you're just kind of forced to be like with the people that you're around, but no. And definitely once we graduated and she tried to be my Facebook friend and I was like, um, no. See, like kids are really mean and strange. And I mean, I know some of, I know like you, like it's really hard to be a teenager, but yeah, like, I don't, I don't know why people do things like that, but whoever's watching any kids that are watching, like you you're gonna be okay no matter what terrible thing you might might be happening to you in middle school or high school you are going to be okay and for the record i've talked more to those other like cool kids than this other girl so huh. and i still don't even think they like really understood what happened but you know in my mind it was a big deal so when i was in middle school um 
my friends and I were playing spin the bottle. I don't know if people still play that or not. And it was like the last day of school. We were all at my friend's like house and they had like this uh, shed and we were all hanging out in there. Like we'd been barbecuing, whatever. Anyway, this guy I had a crush on for a long time. Um, ends up landing on me. And so we're gonna kiss. I've never kissed anyone before ever in my life. And you know, we go across the circle, we kiss, and I didn't expect there to be a tongue involved. And so I bit his tongue and then I had to leave and run away and leave and move and never return. We are so ready for summer and all the fun food. Uh, what are some of your favorite summer recipes that you like to make or some summer food that you like to uh, enjoy? So July watermelon is like my absolute favorite food in the universe. It's like food of the gods. Um, but in terms of like making something, have you guys ever had bulgur wheat salad where it like you have to like, it sits overnight and soaks up like the like lemon and vinegar juices and then you can put chicken in it and onions and parsley, it's so good, and tomatoes. I like strawberry salsa. It's like cut up like diced little strawberries with like honey and some jalapenos and it's delicious. What song turns you into a karaoke star and sing it? My karaoke song is Let's Hear It For The Boy by Denise Williams. It's from the movie Footloose from the 80s. Um, I used to work for a talk show and we did like a flashback time capsule episode and we had Denise Williams on singing the song. So kind of from that moment on, it became my, my karaoke jam. And I don't think I'm going to sing it, but... My baby, he don't talk sweet. He ain't got much to say. That's me. I don't really have one specific karaoke song. I love to sing. I love musicals. But mostly my singing happens like where I just, I'll make any random thing into a song. You probably noticed. I've done that a couple times here. Um, but I love to sing in the car. And then my three-year-old says, Mommy, please don't sing. Don't sing, Mommy. And I mean, it's sad. Alexander Hamilton. My name is Alexander Hamilton. All right, let's end our episode with a little game. This game is called Round Robin Writing. We will be coming up with a sentence for a story. But the trick is that each sentence has to start with the word that the previous sentence ended with. Tiffany is going to give us a sentence, and then it goes to Alex, then Nora, and then Dante, and then myself. So, um, let's get started. Okay, here we go. Every time I heard the ice cream truck go by, I got scared. Scared hardly describes the gnawing sensation of my heart jackhammering like cicadas in my chest. Chest palpitations. That's what was happening to me. Me. I was ready to run. Run as fast as my feet could carry me back to the safety of my friends. Friends. Could I even call them that anymore after what they did? Did they think I could just move on or were they ready to get busted? Busted up because I didn't learn kickboxing for nothing. Nothing could stop me from confronting them for what they did, which was dot, dot, dot. Was dot, dot, dot. You guys, we should be writers. We can like write a book. It was a pretty good story though, you guys. I think um, one of us, we need to do like rock, paper, scissors to see who gets to end up fulfilling this story. <laughs> Alex, Nora, and Dante, we so have enjoyed our time with you today. It's been a blast. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on Legit Kid Lit episode 45. Thanks for having us. It was fun. Thank you so much for having us on this. It was really, really fun. Thank you, guys. This is a great way to start my morning. Guys, I think I have a weird filter on or something. Why is my face like, do you see? It's, 
I don't, there's something weird with my lip. Yeah, I think something's weird with mine too. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Can we just all fly to Alaska and hang out? Now I'm orange! What is happening? Yeah, things are just changing, Nora. Okay.